What's going on guys, Matt Sheldon here from Become Elite and today I stumbled upon a quote from Gareth Bale that really talks about what it's like to be a professional soccer player. I thought the quote was powerful, real, and insightful and I thought that I would give my own opinions on it and kind of like my own perspective of what it's really like to be a professional soccer player, but obviously at a slightly lower level than Gareth Bale. So on the screen right now is the full quote, which I found on Bleacher Report, and it reads, as a professional athlete, particularly in a team environment, you can't choose your own timetable like in golf or tennis. It's like we're basically just robots. We're told where to be, when to be, what time we have to eat, what time we have to report for the coach. It's as though you lose your freedom in a way. But on the other hand, I think a career in football is so short that you have to sacrifice those things. When you're a kid, you don't have so much going on in your head. You can just play with your mates and have a laugh. When you become a professional, there are all types of pressure, of expectations, of people saying negative things about you all the time and you lose that feeling you had as a kid. This is definitely a very powerful quote. You can tell that Gareth Bale is opening up about what it's really like. And even though this is the dream life, we all choose to live this life, you really do have to give up a lot in order to live out this dream. And it's true, it's 100% true. I mean, like Gareth Bale said, you are essentially a robot. For nine to 10 months out of the year, maybe even 11 months, depending on the league that you play in, you really are just allowed to train, to eat, to sleep, and to recover. I sign a contract to play for a team, and then immediately I fly or drive drive out to that city and then for the rest of the season, I'm in this city, state, or country where I usually have no connections, I don't know anybody, I'm literally just moving here to play soccer. And on one hand, it is an absolute dream come true. Your entire life, all you have to focus on is playing a game. I mean, this is the dream life. This is what I, I wanted to do when I was five years old. I wanted to be a professional athlete. I wanted to play basketball, I wanted to play soccer. That's all I could think about was just doing that all day long and getting paid to do that. But at the same exact time, you have sacrificed so much and you've given up so much of your life and so many other things that really make you a human being that you really do feel like a robot. You feel almost as if you're kind of living out a prison sentence for the next nine to 10 months. And I wanna be really careful with that prison sentence quote I just said, because it's not bad. Obviously, we're choosing to do it, but the cost of your freedom, the cost of your day-to-day -day life, the cost of where you have to live and who you're with and your family and friends being thousands of miles away, um, it kind of has a lot of similarities with a prison sentence. Because unlike a regular job where you're just on the clock from nine to five for five days out of the week, as a professional athlete, as a professional footballer, you're on the clock 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're either literally on the clock, physically on the clock, when you're at the facilities, when you're doing your rehab, your activation stuff, you're training, you're playing in games, you're doing film, you're meeting with the coach, you're doing all the actual physical, literal stuff of actually working or you're at home resting, recovering, eating right, sleeping right, and doing what's best for your body. Because as a pro athlete, it's not just a job, it's literally a lifestyle to be a pro athlete. Doing anything other than just the things I just said can be seen by fans, can be seen by the club, can be seen by coaches as unprofessional. You have no vacation days, you barely have sick days, holidays no longer pertain to you. You'll have a few weeks over Christmas and maybe you might get lucky and some of your off days might land on a holiday, but most of the time you're either training, you're working, you have to be in the city, you have to be doing the extra stuff, you have to be doing the rehab, you have to be going to see the trainer, you have to be doing your active recovery sessions, that even on those holidays, you can't relax and enjoy the holiday like you would as a normal human being. Because if you think about it on 4th of July weekend, it's not smart for you to be spending eight hours on a boat celebrating 4th of July in the sun, draining your energy, maybe drinking beers with friends. That's no longer smart. You can't do that anymore. You think the fans or the club or anybody's gonna be happy if they see you even going out for St. Patrick's Day, even if you don't partake in any of the unhealthy habits or an unhealthy food, even if the fact that you're just out there and then you come and play in a game on the weekend and maybe you don't have your best game or your team loses, they're gonna completely blame all of that on the fact that you were out on the weekend or you were doing something that you shouldn't have been doing. Even if it's not a holiday, even if it's something as simple as you have a bye weekend and you finally have a day or two off and you wanna go do something with your family and friends like skiing up on a mountain, that's no longer a smart thing to do. 
because one little wrong turn, one little wrong movement or landing when you're skiing with your family and friends off on the mountain and you tear an ACL and now you're completely out for the season. No club is going to accept that. No club is going to allow that. And even having a weekend off is incredibly, incredibly rare when you're in the full season, when you're the full swing of things. Having a weekend off almost never, ever, ever happens. On the weekend, you're either traveling to or from the game, you're traveling with the team, you're playing the game, you're training, or you're at home, again, resting, recovering, and preparing for the next week of training, the next big match, and doing what's smart for your body. And, I, and it's so hard because I think to have a successful professional career, and I think to be mentally stable, you need to have balance in your life and enjoy things like that. But you understand as a pro that all of that comes at a detriment to how you're going to perform and play. And if you don't perform right, you might not start. If you don't start, you might be consistently benched. If you're consistently benched for the season, you might have a harder time finding a contract the next year. If you have a hard time finding the contracts the next year, you may no longer be a professional soccer player. And it's extreme, but it, it, it's all, it is all true. Even during your off season, and sometimes like in America, you could have two month or three month off seasons if you're in the USL or the MLS. You can't 100% let go and be a normal human being because in the back of your mind, you still have to be fit. You still have to be ready for when you come back and join the team again. You can enjoy yourself during this time. You can spend time with family and friends and really, and really let go but only partially because in the back of your head, all you can think about is in a few weeks, I'm gonna to have to come back and be fit and train and be sharp. And I've only been playing professional soccer now for five years um, and at a lower level, but year after year after year, I've watched my family and my friends and, and everybody celebrate birthdays, um, have Halloween, have New Year's Eve, St. Patrick's Day, Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, all without me while I'm thousands of miles away with my team. As I'm actually filming this right now, it's my sister's birthday. Um, I can't remember the last time that I've not been in season for my brother or my sister's birthday and I've actually spent time with them on their birthday. I think it was before my college I think at like 18, 17 years old, and I'm 26, about to be 27 here in a couple months. I've missed both of their high school and college graduations. I've missed family vacations and reunions and weddings and even funerals of people that are really, really close to me. And you just keep telling yourself, you know, it's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it, because I love this so much. And like Gareth Bell said in the quote, your day-to-day -day life is so extremely regimented. Every single minute is broken down. And even when you, even though, you know, most pros will get back mid afternoon and have the rest of the afternoon and evening off, um, there's still lots of appearances and meetings. And even, even when you're off, you pretty much are kind of confined to your house or confined to do things that aren't gonna wear you out or tire you out for the next day. And I, and I have this quote that I say that as a pro, you're blessed with so much free time in your afternoons and evenings. Um, but you're cursed with the inability to do anything with that free time. Because like I said, everything about your life is doing what's smart for your body and smart for your career. Something as simple as goofing around, you know, with your friends or doing something stupid and stepping off a curb and rolling your ankle, putting you out for a week or a month is detrimental, could be detrimental to your career. And it's something that a lot of people don't think about. I've had a teammate personally um, that was goofing off, doing something stupid late at night, rolled his ankle or broke his ankle, was out for the rest of the season, and then the following year couldn't get a contract. And that's, again, an extreme example. You don't have to be paranoid in your room, locked in safety and curtains drawn and everything, but that's always in the back of your head. I don't ski, I don't snowboard, I don't play basketball. I no longer ride a skateboard or a longboard. I never go swimming or hang out by the pool if it's within 48 hours of a game. Even when my family comes to watch me play and we want to explore Tulsa, you know, the day before a game or the day of the game, I'm cautious about how much and how much time I'm spending on my feet or in the sun so I don't have my energy drain too much for the game. And again, you know, it, I don't want to sound like, like I'm scaring you or I don't want to sound like paranoid, but that's just the reality of what really plays in the back of your mind as a pro athlete. You have to live your life, you have to have balance, you have to enjoy everything. But at the same time, I mean, all this is really real stuff that everybody really thinks about. Obviously, I don't even want to delve too deep into the diet and nutrition. Obviously, you need to have very good diet, very good nutrition in order to be a pro. I mean, I know very few pros that eat like a normal human being eats and has the amount of alcohol that a normal human being has. Um, some do, but it comes at a cost to their game, to their performance. And, and, and like Gareth Bale said in the second part of the quote, this footballing career is so short, especially, you know, I, I entered into the professional football world at age 22. I got a decade of a career, maybe a little bit longer if I'm lucky. And 
you realize that and you realize that you can give up 10 years of your life to live this regimented, crazy robotic lifestyle for those 10 solid years of, of absolutely living out your dream of playing professional soccer. We are living the dream of so many people, so many players out there, and you have to remember that every single day, whenever you think about complaining, whenever you want to have more freedom, you think about that this is the dream life. But no matter how sweet that reward is, no matter how amazing that lifestyle is, you're still a human being. You know, you still want to be able to do these things. I still get sad when I see my entire family getting together in Las Vegas for a big family reunion, my entire extended family, uh, and I'm the only one who didn't make it because I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm rehabbing my groin. I'm in the gym by myself doing these rehab exercises. I'm scrolling through Instagram, and I'm seeing my family there all without me. I sometimes wonder what it'd be like to go with all my friends to Coachella one weekend. I fantasize about not having to make completely new friends every single year when I go and jump from city to city to city. Mimi asked me all the time when we think that we'll actually be able to sit down and sign a one year lease on an apartment. And of course, these are first world problems and people have much, much more difficult lives than us. And it almost seems wrong to be complaining about this as a pro. Um, but I'd be lying if these thoughts never went through my head. You really are just caught in between this, this middle ground of living this absolute dream life. I mean, I've traveled the world playing professional soccer. I've lived in Germany, I've lived in New Zealand, I've lived all over the US. I've traveled to many, many different countries because of this game. I've felt what it's like to play in front of 25,000 people in a packed stadium. I felt what it's like to be able to mark Kaká, one of my childhood heroes. I felt what it's like to guard him and, and stack myself up against him. And at the very core of it, I realize I, I'm paid to kick a soccer ball around a grass field every single day. But at the back of your head, all you can think about is how much you've really sacrificed and given up to do this. The difference I can't really relate to Gareth Bale about though is the mountains and mountains of pressure he has on him um, from fans, from critics, from news reporters, from articles, from everybody. I, I just don't have a million people criticizing me every time that I get injured or you know, people calling me a flop or people calling me a poor signing. The, the pressure and criticism that Gareth Bale faces is completely different than what I face. And in a weird way, I, I'm kind of thankful for that. To one day be the absolute hero and the next day be the villain, I don't know. To have the fans completely switch on you it's probably hard, it has to be hard. But on the flip side, as a lower division professional soccer player, um, even though we don't have the pressure and the criticism that comes with that huge spotlight, we don't get compensated the same way. Uh, we're, we have to, we sacrifice many of the same things that these big pros sacrifice without the big paycheck. And you're doing so much, you're living across the world in this tiny apartment, this tiny attic, but you're making the same as somebody that works at McDonald's. You can't, you just can't afford to have your family or friends fly out and stay with you. Instead of a penthouse, you're living in this tiny apartment. You're on a twin mattress on the ground. It's little things like this that, that make you sometimes even wonder like, is that worth it? And for the people that keep playing, the people like me, I, you just keep on saying, yes, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. You keep telling yourself that once you finally quit in your 30s or whenever, then you can live a normal life. Then you can have freedom and then you can do the things that you've missed out on. And on the very last part of the quote, the very last part I want to talk about is how you no longer have the same feeling as when you're a kid because you're no longer just playing a game to play a game. You're playing a game because it's your job. It's no longer just fun to perform and do well. You now need to perform and do well at the cost of, of being paid. One bad injury, one bad season, and it could be completely gone. Getting benched by your team or not performing that year still has all the same frustrations that you had as a kid, along with all the anxiety of, can I even survive next year? Am I gonna get a contract? Is this gonna be the last year being able to be a pro? But this is what you signed up for. This is what you wanted. So you continue to make the sacrifice. You continue to live vicariously through Instagram and through Facebook. You continue to live like a robot and you continue to put your heart and soul into your training, into your workouts, into your game because it all can be gone in an instant. And we all just try to enjoy this weird dream life slash robot prison sentence for as long as we possibly can every single day of it because you know when you're older and beat up and you know, can no longer play professional, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss it a ton. So you enjoy it right now and you just keep pushing.